welcome to this different little speed paint. <laughs> All right, so this video is going to be a little different than the usual stuff. Usually I try to just do a speed paint and a voiceover, talk over, it's super simple, super easy. But <laughs> this week I have the audacity after not showing up for three weeks to make this video even simpler. I'm doing a, a full-time illustration with y'all today. Uh, I just thought it'd be fun to try to sketch line color all in one video. Obviously I'll cut a lot of parts and keep the important things. But yeah, there's kind of two main reasons behind why I'm doing it this way. One is college started recently and I'm struggling. I'm flopping around like a fish and I'm doing my best. I'm starting to get the hang of it, starting to get a good schedule again. But until then, video is going to be a little spotty and I wasn't going to upload this week either. <laughs> but this week is my sister's birthday. And actually the day this video goes up is her actual birthday. So happy birthday, my dear little sister, I love you. And the reason why I decided I was gonna do speed paint today is I'm actually going to be drawing Kageyama from Haikyuu. And me and my sister have started watching Haikyuu together and I'm in love with it. I already drew Suga, but yeah, anyway, I don't wanna to spoil too much of what we're about to do. So let's go ahead and jump on in. Needless to say, this is gonna be a very chill video so if you feel like it, go ahead and grab a sketchbook and sketch along, or maybe work on a project that you have going. This is just gonna be a nice, relaxing video. We've got lo-fi going in the background. And yeah, I hope you find this at least a little relaxing during your crazy week. I think I vaguely mentioned this earlier, but I already have drawn some of the, well, one of the characters from Haikyuu. I went ahead and drew Suga, cause he is my absolute favorite. He is so precious. So now I'm kind of on the mission to draw all of the Haikyuu boys and I am very aware it's going to take a while, but I am determined to succeed. <laughs> so I need to go part two. I know everybody like talks about how they spent this long time like going through a phase of only drawing eyes, but like I never went through that phase <laughs> and I feel like Eyes are my worst features in my drawings. So lately when I have had free time, I've been trying to just draw eyes. And sometimes it looks good, <laughs> but most of the time it is struggle bus. <laughs> 2.0, just like that. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Today's been a long day. I'm just not realizing how thin Kageyama's eyebrows are, which is so weird because I've always thought that when you draw guys, they're supposed to have like thick eyebrows, but Kageyama looks so adorable with little thin eyebrows. While I've never been very good at eyes, and I've also never really been good at hair, hair is my favorite part to draw, or poses. I know that's really weird because going back to the whole everybody likes to draw eyes and stuff, I feel like I dread the eyes the most, but I love the anatomy. I love drawing like poses, bodies, but I'm not good at it per se, but it's just kind of weird because I don't know, it's just not really what you hear a lot of. This hair is not Kageyama's hair. <laughs> Sorry, I'm having two conversations. You know Kageyama has kind of like this three point haircut where it's like kind of like a W maybe, but maybe not as precise as I'm making it. Maybe it needs to be a little messier. Also, something that's gonna be fun and new today is I don't usually color black hair because I'm so intimidated by it. So, this will be a first time for that. Oh, speaking of first times of doing things, I guess it's not really the first, but it's something that I'm trying to practice. Last night, I drew a background, and hold on, let me see if I can get it. Okay, don't look at the characters too hard because their faces don't look right, but these are like the characters from my Zodiac series, and I was trying really hard, to, and I was focusing on drawing like the building and everything, and it almost turned out perfect, except for these lines right here doesn't quite follow perspective. It's not so bad for someone who hasn't done interior buildings since like seventh grade. So I'll give myself a pass. <laughs> I almost recorded that for a speed paint and I might still, if it's even something that you're interested in. Those characters are actually supposed to be the Zodiac characters from my series, but in a more like normal situation, like they're in high school. Okay, so now I'm gonna draw Kageyama's little juice box. <laughs> I'm kind of nervous because I don't know what I'm doing. Make his juice box straw really long. <laughs> uh, that's not right, but 
I might stick with it. I don't hate it, but I don't love it. So maybe I won't. I don't know yet, we'll find out. Okay, my apologies in advance if you can hear my neighbors mowing their lawn or if you can hear my squeaking chair throughout this video. I'm trying to make sure everything stays kind of quiet, but people gotta live their life and do their things. I'm just now realizing that this box is actually not a juice box, but it's a milk curtain. But with the little straw, it looks like a juice box. Oh, I should probably show you. Okay, so I'm drawing off of this screenshot. I mean, I'm assuming this is milk because there's like a cow on the corner. But looking at the screenshot, there's like a giraffe juice box. And I don't, like, giraffe milk? Or is it something else? Because it's just like a giraffe in the corner with like clouds. I'll put like a picture of it if you're in the corner. But yeah, so I don't know. I just, maybe it's not milk. Or maybe it's some kind of yellow juice. I don't know. Okay, I um, have some other topics that I'm gonna talk about. Oh, the sunlight is catching in here. Hello, little ray of sunlight. Anyway, I have other topics to talk about in a little bit, but I'm gonna save them for when I'm actually coloring and lining because I don't wanna talk about everything during the sketch phase and then have nothing to talk about later. So I'll see you whenever I finish the sketch. Okay, so I've finished the sketching. I think I'm pretty happy with it. And so I was watching back on footage and I realized that uh, when I showed you the screenshot I was drawing from, you could completely see my face in it. So I took the clip out and I'm gonna go ahead and put a picture of the screenshot right here in the corner. So that way you can see what I'm drawing from. So now that our cute little milk carton is in the drawing, I'm gonna go ahead and start lining and we can start talking about a couple of things. It has to do with this art channel. <laughs> so, obviously, I, the elephant in the room, I've done a very bad job of uploading consistently. And I have two ideas for a solution. And one being I just cut down my hours and permanently upload every other week. Or another option would be to go live one week and upload the next week. So you'd still get a normal speed paint on every other week, but there would also be little live videos. And the live videos are gonna either be on Instagram or YouTube. I haven't decided which one yet. I've already done a couple of Instagram live streams and they were really fun, which is what gave me the idea to do this. And so, yeah, but I've never tried streaming on YouTube. So that would be a total first. Not a bad thing, I think. <laughs> but you'd have to be patient with me because I'll be pretty new at it. So let me know what you think about that because if it's something you're not interested in, obviously I don't want to waste either of our time. <laughs> I just thought I miss making content and I miss hanging out with everybody. And if I did live streams, I wouldn't be able to miss those and nothing could be in the way because I'd just like stream for what, an hour, draw something. And I don't know, I thought it would be fun. And that way I feel like I wouldn't be letting everybody down with not uploading ever, but yeah. On the topic of channels and news, um, I've decided that I've lost my ever-loving mind and I thought about making another channel. Now, this is ridiculous because I was talking about how I commit to what I'm doing now, but I recently started making studio vlogs and I made them for fun, <laughs> but I had so much fun doing them and I have thought seriously about starting a studio vlog channel because again, then I would be able to interact with everyone more often and it's way easy to make studio vlog and include lots of drawing in it rather than sitting down doing a speed paint and being committed to sitting down for hours to finish it. With doing a studio vlog, I could do more often uploads, I could draw, show you what I'm working on, it'd be a lot of behind the scene drawings that I do that people who don't have Instagram do get to see. So like, I've noticed a lot of people who are younger in my audience don't have any kind of social medias, which is totally fine. And I feel bad because like, there's a lot of art that I mention here that is already posted to other places and they just get less content in general. So I thought it'd be kind of fun to have that vlog channel to show the artwork that I'm working on, show the process of it and etc. The next question of would I put these studio vlogs on this channel or would I make a totally brand new channel for just studio vlogs? I made an account already and it's called Rest the Slam <laughs> for the vlogs, but I was thinking about if I did decide to do another channel, 
that one would just go up whenever I have enough footage. It might be as often as two or three times a month. It might be once a week. It could be anywhere from once every two months. Just whenever I have enough footage, I'll post a vlog. But I guess I put them on this channel and I got this idea from an artist named Meryl Busby. I talk about her all the time and I'm sure y'all like, shut up restless. She's amazing, we get it. But what she does is like every other week she'll have like a speed paint and then she'll have like a studio vlog. Speed paint, studio vlog. And I was thinking that'd be an easy way to go about getting more content out, but also not pushing myself way too far. With this option, I'd be able to vlog whatever I'm working on, show you how I do things around my little quote unquote studio, which is my bedroom. <laughs> um, it's really funny because this video reminds me a lot of the clips I've already recorded. And so it feels like I'm just doing a little other mini vlog all over. It's a lot more personal, I think, on the vlogs than here because I feel like here, I usually feel the need to be more professional. I'm not really sure, maybe because it's just the speed paint aspect, that's how most people do their speed paints, which I think is great. I think it's so much fun having professionalism in art. Uh, but I don't know, it's just a lot of fun. The idea of getting to know people a little better on a closer basis. If you all are people who can't stand when people can't pronounce things correctly, please don't check out my vlog channel because I don't speak English very well. <laughs> there's a lot of cuts, there's a lot of mess ups, there's a lot of laughing, mostly at myself over there, but I don't know, I have a good time. And I don't know if I'll ever release that footage, but it's fun having it and being like, this is what I did on this date. It's like a journal, like a diary. Anyway, I'm off on a tangent, again. One thing I recently filmed on that channel was I ordered my very first batch of prints from Shutterfly. This was purely just for myself, most, well, it was mostly just for myself. When I did the Suga drawing, I saw a vlog by Nyrell where she ordered some, oh, there she is again, I'm so sorry, y'all. Uh, anyways, it was a vlog by Nyrell, and she had just ordered Shutterfly prints, and they looked really, really awesome. She ordered like this traditional art of hers she did and it looked stunning, like I was so surprised because usually I, when I see a print, it's typically of digital art because that's what typically looks better. So I decided to give it a try and I ordered my old Halloween art that I did last year, the chittering of Morrison View Manor. And I'll pop that on the screen too so that way you know what I'm talking about. And I was blown away. It looks so good. Printed. Like, I was so sure the resolution was going to be bad, but oh my goodness, it was beautiful. I liked that you could see all the different strokes of work that I had to put into the drawing. Anyway, if that vlog ever goes up, you can go see it there, and I'll put it in the iCard or whatever. But let me know your thoughts on the whole idea of the whole vlog system. Are you interested in even seeing the studio vlogs? Does that sound boring to you? Is this something that you'd rather have on this channel or have on a totally different channel? So I'd love to have your input. Let me know. Same thing for the live stream idea. Let me know how you feel about that. And yeah. Okay, I can tell this video is already getting really long. And if you stayed this far, I love you. <laughs> Thank you so much for putting up with me and my goofiness. I really do appreciate it. If you have made it this far, let me know who your favorite Haikyuu character is or if you've even watched Haikyuu before because I know for me, it was a really long time before I actually watched it. I saw it all over the internet and just never picked it up. I also think I broke my dip. <laughs> right when I hit cut on the last clip, I flung my pen across the room <laughs> and I, the cap was off and I think the tip broke, but I'm not. No, it looks like it's only a little bent. Yeah, it's not so bad. I'm a little more scatterbrained than I seem to be. <laughs> I think that's another weird thing about trying to do studio vlogs and doing videos like this is I am very much a squirrel type of person. I can focus sometimes pretty well. I focus well, I think. <laughs> but I also, like every one-off, typically go on multiple tangents of things that don't necessarily matter, but I'm just excited and start rambling. That's not always a fun thing to watch. Like some people have a very hard time stomaching that kind of thing. And others I know typically enjoy it because it springs a more human-like attribute to the people you see online. It reminds me that these people who I think are so perfect and so lovely 
are just as human and normal as the rest of us. Okay, the lighting's starting to get really bad. It's reaching five o'clock. At five o'clock, there's no good place to put my blinds to where it lights up the whole thing without weird streaks in it. So actually, maybe I'm a liar. Let me try something really quick. Mm, yeah, okay, I'm a liar. That, that's much better. I know like literally two seconds ago, I was just talking about how maybe starting a whole vlog studio idea would be so fun, but like, I don't know, literally as soon as I turned off the camera, I got really nervous about it. And I think that's why I haven't done it yet. I'm just so nervous about it. I already know people in real life who watch my videos and it makes me a little nervous, but it makes me more happy than it does nervous because they like me enough to support me and watch my videos or they like my artwork enough to where they will sit through it and look at it. But doing a vlog is just so different because I think that in my brain, if you don't do vlogs right, it's very cringy, which maybe is true. But I feel like I've never actually watched a vlog and been like, yeah, that was so cringy. I feel like it's in my head and I'm worried that I'm gonna look like a complete fool. But now that I've said that, it makes me think that I should just go for it because I have fun doing it. So why do I care if I make such a fool of myself? See, this is what I mean. Like I'm so back and forth about it. I just need people's input because I don't know what to do. I think I'm almost done lining, at least for the first layer of lining. Oh, I gotta do the cow. Sorry, little cow, I'm not gonna race you, I promise. But like, I guess one thing I'm worried about too is I know I'm gonna be so awkward because I'm already really awkward in this video. And this is my normal speed paint stuff. This is me in my element. This is me drawing. This is me knowing what I'm doing and still being nervous <laughs> and not doing this exactly how I'm supposed to, I suppose. I think that's the right word for that. I'm still second guessing everything I'm saying. Um, usually when I do my speed paints, I have like a little script or at least a guideline of things I want to say. In this video, I made a guideline of things I want to say, but I went through everything, I think, during the first few seconds of my lining stage. Anyway, the main concern though behind the vlogs and why I'm kind of worried about it is because obviously I live with my parents still <laughs> and I don't want to show my face, which is another obvious thing. So what am I supposed to show? I have been mostly filming my desk in multiple different corners, but I've also showed off some things like my marker cabinet and I'll start talking while I put my markers away after a drawing or, you know, anything like that. Or I'll show a shot out the window or if maybe I'm going somewhere, it's like a little time lapse of where I've been. But, I don't know. It's a lot of uncertainties, but I know that it's one of those things that I'm just gonna figure out on the way. And as I start my journey, I'm gonna know what I like and what I don't like. Okay, so I've been drawing for an hour and I really hope I don't have an hour's worth of footage because if I do, I might scream. Okay, so I think I like it enough to erase the sketching off of it. That's about it. I think I like him. Fun fact, I'm terrible with a ruler and straight lines. So if I redo this like 12 times, I'm so sorry, <laughs> but I'm hoping we can do it in one attempt. Oh, come on. This is the final line. This decides everything. <sighs> it's good enough. <laughs> okay, I think I have the idea down now. And I'm gonna go ahead and I picked bluebells for Mr. Kageyama here. I know before I mentioned how I was going to try and do all the boys. So let me know if that's something you'd be interested in seeing over here on my YouTube channel, or if I'll just maybe keep that a personal project, or maybe show it in the studio vlogs if I decide to do that, or I'll just put it on Instagram. We'll see. I know Suga's already up on Instagram. That's decent. I like the box so far. I just got an idea to use my blue liner. I haven't used it like at all. So I'm gonna try and use this little blue liner for this drawing. Yeah, I think that's kinda cute. I have to admit though, I feel like Kageyama is missing something. It's making him look less like Kageyama. I don't know, maybe it's just the expression's not angry enough. <laughs> maybe I've drawn him a little too soft. I don't know. But I think overall, it's kind of cute. I have that poem with Suga too. I feel like I just haven't captured who they really are. All right, it looks like the liner turned out pretty much how I wanted it to. Well, my family is now home, so I'm gonna go spend some time with them, say hello, uh, check out everybody's day, 
and I then I'm going to come back and finish this. It'll probably be nighttime, so the lighting's gonna be totally different. So I'll see you soon. All right, so I finally figured out what it is that makes him not look as much like Kakiyama as I want him to. He's too happy. He looks like he's smiling a little bit on the side of his mouth. Anyway, I'm gonna start the coloring portion and for the rest of this video, I'm so sorry to admit, I'm gonna be very in and out recording bits. I have a very busy night ahead of me, but I really wanna try to get this video out by Friday. Coloring is my absolute favorite part. I get so excited about it every time I start a drawing. <laughs> I always start with the skin, but I feel like I probably should have done the background first this time. Okay, so after going over some clips, I realized I totally forgot to talk about why I ordered prints in the first place, other than I just saw them and I wanted to try them. Uh, I ordered Halloween prints because this Halloween I'm thinking about doing a huge sale in commission artwork. I'm thinking that I want to do something as big as 50% off. Anything that's remotely Halloween or fall themed in my commission work. And I want to include some cute little stickers and a free print of Morrison View Manor for each order. I don't have anything set in stone yet. I have to see if I can balance out my schedule. But if I can, I really think it'd be a lot of fun. I did a little sale kind of like this for Christmas and it w did really well. I got more orders than I think I ever had before in one span of time. So, okay, wait, no. There was one time that was a little bigger than that. That was because I was doing artist trading card commission. But I took more orders of those because they're smaller and they were easier to do. Anyway, so that's kind of my plan. I don't know if anybody will be interested in that because I know Halloween's not everybody's favorite, but I am ready for some Halloween. I've actually already bought <laughs> Halloween decorations for my room. I want to decorate my room, get some spooky music going, and just kind of chill out and start Halloween drawings. I won't post any of them anywhere, but I know it's a little too early to be getting all excited about Halloween, but I'm just ready and I'm in the spirit. I bought like two Halloween candles recently, which I don't regret even a little bit. <laughs> but that kind of brings me to the question, when do y'all think it's too early to celebrate Halloween? Because I hear like people will be like, not till October. And I'm like, okay, that's fine. But then I also know people who are already got Christmas decorations up and we're in September. So I just don't know. I think, okay, sorry, we're even sidetracked for a second. But I think for this drawing, I'm gonna go for a very simple shade because I know like in anime, most of the time, there's a very simple cell shading. Yes, a cell shading like look to the artwork. And I think that'll help me also get a little bit of a Kageyama feel. Part of me also wants to go full blown. Let's just make it really pretty and do really nice shading. So I don't know, we'll see when it ends, I guess. <laughs> One really thing that I, bad thing that I'm guilty of is when I do my art, I don't always have a plan. <laughs> I just kind of jump into it and hope the best. And that's something I think I'm gonna work on this year. I feel like I've already started taking some changes, like I will start, or I've already started, I guess. I've already started like a planning notebook or a drawing sketchbook. Yeah, so I plan out my thumbnails before I finish a drawing. Not if it's like a drawing that in, goes in this sketchbook, but like for my full pieces that I do once a month, I always plan those out because I'm nervous drawing on such a big canvas with no plan or idea of where anything goes. So I know that I'm definitely taking steps towards the right direction. I just want to keep improving and keep going towards my planning. I think I will overall be happier with my art too, because I know I did that with, uh, again, Morrison Manor, and it's one of my favorite pieces still to this day, and it's almost been a year since I made it, <laughs> which is kind of bad, but kind of awesome. Just talking about Morrison View Manor makes me want to, like, start my Halloween speed paints again. Oh, that's another thing that I was going to talk about. <laughs> so, every year I've done my Halloween speed paints with no voiceovers, or at least my favorite ones, like my spookiest ones I have. So Morrison View Manor was like that. I did a witch speed paint that was like that. So I don't know if I'll just do like I did last year and do some speed paints with voiceovers and others are gonna be without voiceover. And that's another thing I'd like your feedback on. Oh, I feel like I'm so needy and I've asked for so much feedback, but like, I don't know, I just don't know what to do and I need help. <laughs> and why not consult the people who stick around and want to watch your videos? 
All right, for the hair, I'm gonna try and do a, hopefully, subtle blue in it to help it from being just black hair. Uh, I know that in the anime, his hair pretty much is plain black, but I don't know, I think it'd be really fun to have a cohesive amount of blue going through with the blue bells, the blue in his hair, the blue sky on his milk carton, and yeah. I think I'm gonna do what I always do, and I'm going to put a little bit of rubbing alcohol in the background to make it a little more lively. I need to stop doing that, but I can't. I love it so much. I love the texture rubbing alcohol puts in your artwork, and for those of you who have no idea what I'm talking about, I cannot wait to open your eyes to this lovely effect that costs you nothing, which I guess is nice since you have to pay so much money for alcohol-based markers. Alrighty, it is time to do the little rubbing roll thing, and for those of you who don't know, this is something I do like every piece. I love it so much. This one bottle of alcohol has lasted me for maybe two years, so like it's awesome because it doesn't take much. It's a lot of fun, and it brings so much texture, and it costs you, like, nothing. First, I'm just going to take a little spray bottle. This is my sister's old, I think, facial moisturizer thing? Yeah. <laughs> I don't really know what it is. I'm not super into makeup. I have a really hard time remembering what everything is, I'm not gonna lie. Uh, so first, I'm just gonna go with a little bit of a light coat to liven up this background. So it comes out really light, so I don't know if you'll be able to see it at first, but after a couple sprays, and what I might do is, since this is a very light rubbing alcohol, I might just use a brush instead of a spray bottle. Anyway, so this texture just is going to hopefully liven up the piece just a little bit. I don't even know if it'll really be noticeable to everybody else, but for me, it makes the world of difference. I'm going to mix some dark blue in with the rubbing alcohol. Oh, this is the scariest part. I feel like I'm wasting air but I'm not, it's worth it. Oh, it's raining! Hi, rain! Oh, it's lovely news. We needed it. Alright, add a little more blue over here. So there's a little extra blue in there. It's in his hair a little bit too, but I'm not really worried about it since the hair is going to be blue. And now that I've seen this, I think I'm going to add a little more rubbing alcohol to it, but I'm going to use a higher concentration. Alright, so before I was using 70, and now I'm going to go ahead and use a 90 and a blue 90. The blue 90 is just 90% and I mix some blue in it. I typically use the blue a lot, so that's why I have a lot of it pre-mixed. I go and just give it a little tap. That's what I was hoping for. As always, I've got a little over the top with it, but I love it that way. <laughs> so I'm pretty happy about it. And see, it like doesn't really do like a ton. Like You can't see a whole lot of difference. but it means a lot to me because it doesn't look like a plain background. And after this dries, it'll look a little better, I think. I hope. <laughs> because it's still wet, so it's going to have like a, well, wet texture. And when it's wet, it typically looks a little darker, but it's going to dry up pretty soon before I know it. And then I'm going to be really happy with it. <laughs> I decided I really love it coming outside of the edge like this. I think it's kind of fun. It gives it like a painterly-ish look. And I kind of want to put it everywhere. <laughs> But I'm gonna refrain from doing that because I know I'll get too carried away. <laughs> okay, so I think I'm gonna start with let's start with this. Yeah, that's kind of fun. Feels like kite it right now. <laughs> Once again, eyes and hair, not my favorite, but I'm okay with it. I think. Add some blue on top of the white though, make it a little less harsh. I think. I think I like that better. <laughs> I can't tell. At least for these lime ones, I think. Yeah, I think that's better. For some reason, Kageyama and Haru from Free remind me of each other a lot. It's kind of weird, because I know like, I don't know, just certain screenshots at least. I think the next boy I want to do is I kind of want to redo Suga, because I feel like I didn't do Suga very well in my style, but I think I definitely drew Kageyama more in my style. And so I kind of want to retry doing Suga, but I might save him for last. But anyways, what I was saying is the next one I want to do is Hinata. Just because I feel like you can't do Kageyama without Hinata. <laughs> oh, Liberty. So I've accidentally finished this piece without recording any more footage. Um, I just forgot to record. 
and I am pretty happy with this piece. The only thing that bothers me is I feel like it looks so much better if I just cover this part. I'm having a really hard time with head shapes lately, which is really weird because that's not something I used to struggle with. And I feel like if I just would have changed, made his face not as long as it is, it would look really good. So that's for next time. Alrighty, well, thank you so much if you made it this far to the end. You are an absolute legend. Thank you so much for watching, and I really hope you enjoyed this illustration. Bye bye